Governor Scott and political leaders deliver more empty promises for education funding. Charter school proponents break their promises and demand more of your money. And a flash mob strikes at the Capitol. Those are some of the headlines topping week five of the FEA Frontline Video Report. Hello, I'm Clara Cook, Secretary Treasurer of the Florida Education Association. When is a billion dollars not really worth a billion? When Governor Rick Scott and Tallahassee political leaders start cooking the books. Governor Scott says he won't budge on giving schools another billion dollars. But he's not telling you that this billion will do little more than keep our heads above water. It certainly won't give us any more money than we had last year. You ask why? Because the billion that he is bragging about simply replaces lost property taxes, the edge of jobs funding that we received last year, and it will barely pay for projected student growth. We now have the budget recommendations from the Florida House and Senate. Both proposals prove that the state leadership is not truly committed to investing in our children's education or Florida's future. The budget proposals shortchange our students by leaving per pupil funding several hundred dollars less than it was a few years back. And the budgets don't account for cost of living increases or the flood of unfunded mandates handed down by the governor and Tallahassee politicians. Even worse, you won't see any of this money in your wallet. That billion isn't enough for your raise or to help offset health care premiums. The governor has claimed that he's committed to making sure every student gets a good education. But this budget proposal makes one wonder about the strength of that commitment. So don't cash that check yet. Here's more proof that the legislature wants to jam unaccountable charter schools down the throats of Florida taxpayers and slowly defund public education. Members of the Senate Education Committee approved the charter school bill without giving it a proper and thorough hearing. Hiding under the veil of equal and fair funding for all, lawmakers allotted just over an hour for consideration of the proposed measure. That may sound like a lot of time, but it isn't, especially when 80 people signed up to testify and 13 amendments need to be considered. The proposal would shift public funds for maintenance and construction from traditional public schools to charter schools. Those funds would allow charters to purchase new, privately owned facilities while traditional public school buildings remain in need of desperate repair. It would also rob districts of their ability to purchase equipment, such as computers and school buses. The measure also aims to increase the number of privately run charter schools. Senator Bill Monford filed the amendments, but lawmakers only allowed one to be heard and cut short public testimony. Senator Monford wants to remove a provision to allow charter schools to receive the same funding as traditional public schools. That would cost public schools $140 million. Remember, charter school supporters have claimed they could educate students for less and promised they wouldn't come asking for capital outlay money. This will result in an increase in financial stress on our school district's debt burden. Uh, many of these districts have the funds already obligated for many years to come. We don't have hardly any to share. Um, uh, and we're, tr we're, doing, we're desperate to meet our own needs. The same committee advanced another proposal designed to expand virtual learning by allowing part-time and full-time Florida virtual schools and district virtual instruction to kindergarten through grade 12. This opens the door to full-time virtual students to attend their district home school for extracurricular activities and making online cheating a misdemeanor. Despite testimony from the executive director for the Foundation for Florida's Future that fine arts classes do little to improve academic achievement, a bill in support of fine arts curriculum has moved through committee. Education budget cuts have devastated many fine arts programs. And we're hearing how those cuts are having a negative impact on Florida's workforce. What we're finding is that jobs and businesses are finding no viable workforce and they are sending those jobs out of our state. Uh, we are losing business on this and it is more than just a basic fine art credit. Research has shown that fine arts courses such as economics, technology, science, and engineering help students perform higher on the FCAT. Have you ever wanted to share your unused sick leave with a coworker who needs more time to recover from an illness? Currently, state law allows districts to create policies for donation of sick leave to relatives, but not non-relatives. 
A measure recommended by members of the St. Lucie County Classroom Teachers Association and Classified Unit would allow school districts to create more flexible sick leave policies. The new policy would pave the way for teachers and ESPs to donate unused sick leave to a colleague in need. The new policy would still be subject to collective bargaining. And here's a new way to draw attention to your issues. Hey Ricky, you're so great, you're so you make it sick every day. Yes, you're watching a flash mob in action. Members of Organize Now and Progress Florida join healthcare workers at the governor's office. They have launched a new campaign called Rick Makes Me Sick in response to massive healthcare cuts. Members say they are taking their fight to the streets and calling out Governor Scott and the Florida legislature. Make sure to check out feaweb.org for the latest information on the legislative session. While you're there, sign up for FEA's Take Action Alerts, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Facebook. But before we leave, please take a look at the FEA Bill watch lists. These are important proposals that we must carefully monitor throughout the legislative session. Make sure to stay up to date with the FEA Frontline Video Report. We'll see you again next week.